doing now? We're on a pink noise check test. And suddenly everything turns off. Oh, computer timed out. Oh, it's another update on the Denon. Huh. Hmm. What could, um, what could it be updating? Anything to do with this Helos? You know? I don't even hardly use it. I hardly use it. Internet radio? I probably use it probably about that much. It's very tiny. How much do I uh, use Oro Kaput 3D? Um, almost, almost like that. <sighs> yeah, all these kind of like. Consumer sound format, uh, you know, from the professional. Are you professional? You know, and then, you know, these things, uh, they don't, they, they just don't excite me. Not in the same way as once. Uh, DDSX, um, how often do I use that? Almost zero. Two lousy rubbish DDSX movies, and they sound absolutely good. Oh, they're, so, they're dreadful. They're awful. We'll never play them again. <coughs> um, Dolby Atmos. Could have, could have, could have read it the other night. Uh, admit, uh, what was it? Admission Impossible. Uh, Rogue One Nation. Wasn't that? Wasn't that a Star Wars movie? Something like that. Kind of look like Star Wars. Um, yeah, I turned on all the amplifiers, everything, but I just, I just kept it. I just kept it switched in on seven point one. Didn't even bother switching on Atmos. Mm. You see, it's uh, it's the film studios that are letting it down, letting down the uh, the format. I think they're the ones kind of ruining it. I think. Um, Dolby Labs Atmos is um is flawed as it is. It is flawed like DDSX or a 3D. It doesn't have a discrete below surround channel. I've got to matrixly do it to get a below surround. You know, I've got about eleven eleven or so uh, below surround speakers around the room. Um uh, I was watching that. Ghostbuster um, re uh, afterlife, I think. Can't you know, can't watch that tonight. Or that was it last night, or the other day? I can't remember. Um, and after that, oh, it says completed now. Um, oh, so pop quiz. What was the update? <laughs> I mean, doesn't tell you exactly. Uh, you know, for um, it always goes back there. I've got to switch that mode so it goes back to where it was last. There we go. Um, oh, so okay. Um, just make that ping noise. I think it's general. Firmware, check for update, uh, latest version, whatever that is. I have no idea. It doesn't, it doesn't even say you got to go on their website, you know. Um, and it's most likely the update was probably probably done for um, North, North USA probably a month or so ago and then then they they can't kind of reach uh the U, um uk europe whatever and then other other nation countries uh but, um, you know you got to kind of go looking like what was the you know and then major 
disappointment. You know, it's it's it's, it's poor uh, either stabilising this or that. Uh, it doesn't really bring anything really spectacular for sound formatting to the table. Does it? Does it? Imp has it? Has it improved the the Dolby DSU with that kind of sloshy? center channel because it's a kind of bit of whooshy yeah um it doesn't sound anything like a uh, proper pro logic or pl2 uh, i'm not sure about the chips on pl2s um but well well whatever they're, they're a lot better than that dsp uh dsu dsu which is well it's a dsp um digital signal processing um, but it's just dreadful. It's just awful. It's just all swashy and whooshy. It's totally flawed. It's not right. It's not. It's not right. And I don't even like using the thing. I don't like using fake stereo surround. It doesn't float my boat anymore. It was kind of exciting hearing it once with. Um, I think on one receiver, a uh, AVR had. Uh, what was that? Pro Logic Two. That's it. Um, Prologic 2X came around several years later, and yeah, kind of like, yeah, but uh, could I? Uh, I can't recall, recall if I could have switched it to Prologic and Prologic 2. Um, can't recall whether I could have done that with the other AV off. Um, I think I think it. I'm not sure. I think it. I think it did. The only other thing I didn't like with um, was Home THX. Don't like it. Um, I mean, if you're going to use it and kind of re-equalize, you know, your speakers, it, it's you got to have you got to do it right. You got to have things set up. You got microphone up. Check check the speakers that they all got the same frequency response you know with frequency sweep and it overlays um nicely and then you know once that's done and then microphone a little bit further back in the room and then it takes a bit of time to do a manual eq check um to get everything spot on so you know to uh round the seating area you can't do all the seats because it's impossible um once once that's done and then switching on the re eq would then have a benefit but if you if your speakers are going to have too much top end in a certain frequency and you know too much high end uh than the other speaker you know the the use of using that re eq thing is is useless <laughs> because the frequency response electronically of the frequency response playing you know and when you look at it it's got a certain curvature it's got an x ro curve roll off and when you add the re eq you're going to roll those high frequencies down a little bit more so some high 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 frequencies may may be a little bit awkward to hear depending on how the speakers are set up and aligned in the room and you know certain frequencies uh depending on their um uh, the dynamic range level you know some frequencies that will sound very faint even though other frequencies will sound you know the same that same frequency or such may sound okay when it's playing a little bit louder in the mix but when it's playing a little soft, it's it's like, pfft. yeah, it's going to be faint. You know, you got to have a room that's really good. You know, um, yeah. But I'll look in to see what that update is. Um, but you know, I don't think I don't. Yeah, I don't, if it if it did anything for Dolby DSU, I'll probably do another video because I only have to put some, some, some something on and then play it. And if it, I only have to listen to the center channel. I don't have to listen to the left or right or any other channel. I only have to listen to the center. And if it's got that kind of whoosh, whoosh, you know, I know, well, the firmware update wasn't for the Dolby DSU. It doesn't matter. I've got, I've got proper versions here, down here to use. 
or uh, I could use a ProLogic on, you know, this would do ProLogic to ProLogic, ProLogic to, ProLogic to music. I don't know why music, really pointless. Um, don't know why, you know, it could, if it, if it, if, um, um, don't know why, can't do a ProLogic to EX, you know, because, um, this is what I had firmware for so many years. And by Pro, Pro by the time ProLogic 2X came around, this processor would have still been current in in the uh, production, you know, for, you know, um, you know, and they could have added that. Um, and the PL2X, it, 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 it really only works mostly for the surround channel output, the surrounds, that's it, the surrounds, you know the back uh, well these are originally the back surrounds <laughs> or they are originally the surrounds um and the and the ones that are on the back are part of all these they are part of um the whole thing but it's just separating dividing up the channels you know so you you know you don't you eliminate center phantom signal and kind of push it towards the back um, and it just gives it a little bit more spatial kind of sound movement around the around the uh, around the listeners um, but pl2x is 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 pretty pretty okay I, um, it's okay for stereo surround movies you know split surround you know 5.1 you know, and improving the surround channel with the split surround, or um, there's no point with 7.1 because you get discrete some, you get discrete sound. But um, PL2X shouldn't really be used with Dolby Stereo 424 Matrix. Really shouldn't. You should be using the original. And like I so say, you, you got an S810 or site, switch it into the mode, um, and then it will just duplicate the sound. That you hear on the side surrounds and puts it at the back. That's how it originally was. And there's not many. Well, I don't think there's many home cinemas that have got a, an SA10 in their rack. Your average AVR ain't gonna do it. It's gonna be the to, it's gonna be the total opposite of a, every of what it should be. So you know you can't cater for every sound format. With a typical average AVR. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling. Anyway, I'm going to get back to what I was doing. <laughs>